Dreams are for real. They push to make us hope, aspire, believe, persevere, achieve. Dreams make us better and make the whole world go round. This could be a story of you and me. If and when we find the right means at the right time at the right place. Banks and lending institutions are already working round the clock, transforming, consolidating, developing digitally, making credit accessible in smart, seamless and secure ways, putting smiles on a billion faces. At Lentra, we empower lenders with tomorrow's lending ecosystem today. We are disrupting, we are transforming, we are building, we are leading with the complete cloud native digital lending platform. We are democratizing credit through data backed decisions, customer behavioral intelligence and split second processing and approvals. Welcome to the world of Lentra Lending Cloud, empowering lenders to fuel the dreams and ambitions of millions. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to welcome you all to our webinar on digitization of vehicle financing by Lentra. My name is Amrit, and I will be your host this afternoon. Without further ado, let me begin with a short introduction of Lentra. Lentra empowers lenders to fuel the dreams and ambitions of millions across the globe through digital lending transformation. Our platform, Lentra Lending Cloud, is the number one cloud lending platform designed and developed to empower financial institutions with tomorrow's lending ecosystem today. We are one of the fastest growing SaaS companies in the world with award-winning products within our portfolio. Our partnership approach, coupled with our innovative product and commercial offering, ensures the least disruption to a client's existing system, with the risk of implementation and adoption being carried by us. The API-first, fully digital, secured Lentra Lending Cloud is the future of smart, seamless, and secure digital lending. Today, we are trusted by over 50 clients for whom we've built over 16 loan journeys and an ecosystem integrated with over 250 fintechs and over 60 OEMs. We are empowering our clients to democratize credit through accurate decisioning and rapid processing. A quick, that, that, that does it about Lentra. Certain hygiene things about the webinar as we move forward. Your audio and your video has been muted by design. So should you have any questions arising as the webinar progresses, I invite you to please uh, write them in the chat window and we, our experts will be happy to take it up from there. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to welcome Mr. Rakesh Kumar, Head of Two-Wheeler and Auto Loans at HDB Financial Services, to take us through the first segment of the webinar, Digitization of Two-Wheeler Financing. Mr. Rakesh is an engineering graduate with over 31 years of experience across two-wheeler financing, product sales, and retail finance sales. Over to you, Rakesh. Thank you, Amrit, for giving this opportunity. I'll be talking about the two-wheeler industry and then how the digitization has helped the industry to grow further. So the current the industry currently is of about 12 lakhs a month, which is approximately 20% down from the highest ever, which was there in 1920, after the lockdown and the uh, COVID period. It came down to some 10 lakhs, 11 lakhs. Again, it has shown some good growth in the last few months. And if you talk about the last, the current festivity month, which has gone, it has come back to the, the normal uh, numbers, which was there in uh, 1920. Uh, if we take an average of the industry, which is currently at about 12.5, 13 lakhs for this financial year, and that is the prediction where it will land. And this is the average per month uh, number. The total finance industry is 60% of the uh, vehicles sold, and which is approximately eight to nine lakhs, all companies put together. 
and there are almost 27 28 organized players spread across the globe across the country uh, giving the retail finance op option to the customer at almost a b c d class town they are now the reach is extended to that particular level so in this i'll just give you a small background how this was working in three four years back five years back how the retail finance industry was actually working and from there they have moved to the current stage so if we talk about uh, 2011 12 13 it was 100 percent paper-based uh, retail finance option the customer used to walk to a dealership and then Doc, physical documents were collected, then some manual application was filled and submitted to the respective uh, office through a fax or through an email to them. Uh, and then the backend process used to start. And then FI was initiated, a PVR was there. And basically that there was a physical approval of the case which used to come uh, back to the dealership and where the vehicle was delivered only after the the physical verification and the TVR process, and if provided all the documents were in line as per the requirement of the finance company. From there, it has now moved to a 90% paperless option in the current process. A very small part of the paper, paper is required where a physical signature is done by the customer and that you know, the, where the vehicle is registered, but still the wet signature is required by the uh, local uh, authorities. Uh, the initially the turnover time was two days which has now come down to 10 minutes so rather in current situation we can say a yes or no to a two-wheeler loan customer in 10 minutes and say that okay this is the approved loan amount and this is the tenor what we are we will be giving it to you and everything is decided in 10 minutes and then our delivery order is forwarded to the dealer on his uh, registered email ID. So that is the current process from a two days at has reached to a 10 minutes process. And all the validation of the KYC is now done real time. So his Aadhaar validation, his PAN card validation, his bank account validation, everything is done real time. Uh, currently, earlier there was no such validation available, only the TVR validation, TVR by you used to validate when how basically the discussion with the customer. So from there to so this movement is very, very fast and it has actually helped us in identifying the customer, who he is from, where he has come, what is the capability, what is his past payment uh, history. Everything is now decided on the real-time basis. So that is, that is what the technology has helped us in digitalization has helped us in two-wheeler retail finance. In a, in a process where the, because this is a high turnover business, uh, the number of customer onboarded on a daily basis is on a very, very higher side. So the, the improvement it had is very, very, was very much required. And this digitization has actually helped us in doing that. And there was a typical process in uh, two-wheeler that uh, the vehicle delivery, since the dealer were a little bit not that optimistic in uh, waiting for the final approval from a uh, two-wheeler retail finance company. So they used to deliver the vehicle at their own risk before the final approval used to come. From there in the current process, for every delivery that uh, now dealer gets a valid delivery order so that he is also assured about his payment coming from the retail finance company. So that has the digitization has actually helped into this particular stage. We can move to the next slide. From here, the current process, we had to move to 100% digitization, which means there is no physical paper required or no physical signature of the customer is required. We had to move to that place. And that 10% is uh, what I said in the previous last slide, that 90% is already, already digitized. That 10% is the RTO paper, which is required to be signed. The recent development with Wahan and a lot of integration which has happened with Wahan and the dealer, this process should take at least one more year to get it 100% digitized. Then the process which has been uh, currently being done, that is eNash, eSign, OKYC, Biometric, Iris, all those processes have helped to minimize the identity theft. 
in a high volume industry in a high volume market this was a major problem by most of faced by most of the retail finance company and which means i'll just explain it again that uh, somebody else's aadhar card was edited and used by some other person S similar thing was the pan number was right but the photograph was changed and all those things so basically the industry was actually facing an identity theft that whether the the customer who is taking the loan is the same person who has given us the or the document belong to him or not with these validation uh, this has helped us in eliminating the identity theft to a larger extent and this elimination has actually helped us to have a better portfolio and the better portfolio results into a better uh, rate the interest rate to a customer a better loan amount to the customer and the and the tat anyways has to be very very fast so that has helped us uh, this entire uh, validation process has helped to improve the industry one more uh, digitization uh, is required currently the entire process in spite of 90% of digitization is an assisted model a customer walks into the showroom then there is a finance guy or the even the dealer executive will explain him about the retail finance loan process then asks for the kyc document upload it and manually fill in the uh, in the in the app the details of the customer and then process it uh, though everything happens within 10 minutes but yes that is an assisted model there somebody physically sitting at the dealership does that and then the final approval is given to the dealer and to the customer from there it has to move to a self assisted model something similar to uh, the boarding card which is there at the airport something like that that you walk into inside a airport and take your boarding card of your own so something uh, some similar process has to be here only there are some pilot has been done in few of the dealership with some of the financer but that has, that is the need of the hour if you want to actually scale this business then it has to move to a self assisted model where the customer before walking into the dealership checks his eligibility uh, checks the uh, vehicle price checks the dealership which is near to his office or his uh, residence and then or, or or checks the offer given by various dealer in his in his city and then decides and come with a valid do at the dealership and give hand over hand over the do uh, to that dealer and take the vehicle delivery and complete the local formality which is required at the dealership so that it needs to move towards that direction and hopefully very fast we expect that uh, with the players like lentra that should help us the industry into moving towards that direction uh, that uh, self assisted model and when this self assisted model will be implemented it will directly impact to the manpower cost which this particular industry is it is a very very big challenge for any uh, two wheeler retail finance company today but manpower cost and the pilferages and the whatever uh, <clears throat> process lapses and everything happens during because of the manpower that will get eliminated so this will help in reducing all these things and once this is reduced which means the overall cost will get come come down and this cost which comes down will first impact the overall balance sheet of the retail finance company and then finally it will be passed on to the to the customer only in terms of uh, better rates and a higher loan amount and the uh, better tenor to the customer as per his requirement today as i said that uh, uh, retail finance is very easily available in almost a class b class c class d class town but there are some 25000 outlets where a two wheeler is sold today which means there are remotest of place where a two wheeler dealer you will find uh, there is a two wheeler dealer which sells the vehicles and a small service setup is also there uh, today those 20 30% of the population the retail finance availability is a problem and it does not make viable for any of the organization to operate at that location then to have a collection set up at those locations all those things is a challenge today with this digitization that reach will definitely expand because uh, the overall cost of operation will come down because of digitization and then uh, not only the cost of sourcing but cost of processing the file that will also come down so there is one particular change which has the industry has recently uh, seen again with the help of lentra we have uh, been working into 
two wheeler drones for HDB, and that is the image based disbursement. So once the finally the loan and everything is approved, uh, the doc the dealer document is scanned and send it uh, for internal process, and the dealer gets the payment within same day or at the max uh, the next day. So that process has actually helped us to expand our reach. And once the entire digitization uh, digitization process is there, then this reach can be mapped with the dealership available in the market, which means wherever two wheeler is sold, a retail finance company or retail finance opportunity or the option is available for the customer to decide at that location. If I had to just conclude that uh, <clears throat> the future digitization has to be 100%. Uh, one, uh, there is a bottleneck because of the RTO, but hopefully that should uh, be there within a year or so. And then the other, all other processes has to be very, very smooth and very fast uh, to work with, which will take this industry uh, to the next level because the growth of the industry, which has seen in this season, uh, should continue the next financial year, which means if 17, 18 lakhs is to be sold in the market and approximate 70% of the is the retail finance, which means 12 lakh customer has to onboard it every month. And this can only happen if we have a foolproof digitization process. And these are the few suggestions which I have uh, made here for the improvement. Thank you, Amrit, for giving this opportunity uh, to take it forward. Thank you so much, Mr. Rakesh. The pleasure is all ours. It was indeed a very insightful segment that you, that you took us through. Uh, with, with that thought in mind about the digitization of two-wheeler loans, uh, and and uh, the fact that Lentra and HDB Financial Services are partners in, in taking this to uh, uh, underserved and unserved markets across India. Uh, let me now invite Mr. Rohit Sharma, Senior Director, Client Success at Lentra, to take us through the next segment of our webinar, which talks about the digitization that Lentra is bringing in the two, in the auto loan financing space. Over to you, Rohit. Hi, can we have the video, please? Thinking of getting your dream bike? Remember what it feels like when your dream bike zooms past you and you're not the rider? What about financing and the day's worth of efforts to bring your bike home? Sit tight and forget all your worries. Because Lentra's cloud native digital lending platform for two-wheeler loans is here. Empowering lenders with a completely cloud native digital lending platform. Powering an open API-based lending ecosystem that enables them to digitally cover larger markets while spending less on resources, data errors, and bureau spends. Apply for your two-wheeler loan instantly with simultaneous quotes from lenders in real time. Get instant decisions and approval on your loan application along with spot application and approvals from your RTO. Your keys to your dream bike is only a few clicks away. And don't forget to wear a helmet and ride away to glory. Uh, thanks Amrit uh, for the introductions that you have done. Um, I really want to talk uh, about three things in this webinar. Um, uh, the way uh, basically we see auto finance industry shaping up in India um, and how these opportunity and the developments in India have placed uh, us in a virtuous uh, cycle where we have so much opportunity existing in the, in, in the Indian ecosystem. And in the uh, end, I would really uh, want to talk about how Lentra is uh, contributing to uh, some of these initiatives that are India wide right now. Uh, so let me just start with uh, how this uh, festive season, for example, has panned out um, for the auto finance industry. Uh, all the five segments, uh, two-wheeler, three-wheeler, uh, personal vehicle, commercial vehicle, tractors, they all have seen such a uh, vast growth in this uh, season. Almost 2.1 million uh, sales uh, have been done for uh, uh, this segment. Uh, which is which is kind of a 8.32 percent growth over the pre-COVID uh, uh, times uh, numbers, 
and this is expected to keep growing um, even the used car sale uh, has uh, seen a big uptick um, it is right now slated as a 23 billion dollar industry in india and is experiencing a growth of about 20 20% so we we are at lentra we are very very uh, happy about this opportunity and we want to uh, uh, play a part in uh, the auto finance uh, segment uh, quite a lot we have a lot of customers who are also looking for solutions around how uh, we can digitally approve a customer uh, in a very very quick and a seamless and a, a frictionless manner and uh, and that takes me to the second uh, thing that i wanted to talk about and how and what at lentra we are leveraging as a ecosystem that is developed uh, in india so for that first i want to talk about the jam trinity where jandhan aadhar and the mobile together are enabling a lot of solutions which lentra is uh, kind of uh, trying to uh, uh, look at and uh, use for digital onboarding we have the digital locker which is making so many things easier to uh, the documents easier to store share and verify that is one very critical piece in auto finance that we are uh, very actively looking at digital uh, e sign digital agreements uh, and the onboarding experience as such is becoming much more uh, easy so uh, what at lendra uh, this slide shows is that we've created an end to end solution which really starts as a growth en enabler for your business where we have uh, lead capture apis that uh, we have uh, created these are open apis that can be exposed to partners so we have enabled use cases where uh, leads are coming to for the auto financiers not only from um, dealerships but also from directly from oems and various new channels that have come in uh, especially in the used car where uh, there are so many aggregators that you can uh, uh, partner with for these uh, uh, these uh, leads that are looking for finance uh, we we also on the customer side are trying to enable uh, some efficiency tools like uh, the ocr where you can uh, just uh, by clicking on the ovds you can uh, verify them verify them through an api do a very very quick check with the uh, government databases like nsdl aadhar and uh, give a very seamless experience to the customer where most of his data of of the application is auto populated through these apis this also enables uh, a lot of data collection which can then be used by the financier to segment his customer um, the, based on the policy uh, of the financier where uh, some of these uh, master driven uh, uh, rules can be written and not one size fits all but a tailor made journey can be given to the type of customer who's landed on your uh, doorstep or on your website for uh, for uh, looking for a loan um, once we have uh, the data there is, uh, within uh, maybe 7 to 8 minutes is what our endeavor is to uh, be able to give a soft code to the customer be it on the dealership premises or 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 if he is hunting for a loan uh, from his home uh, for a pre approval kind of a scenario uh, in both cases and uh, enable a very quick disbursement where we uh, enable uh, e signing um, and uh, uh, e mandate so that the disbursals can be immediately made and uh, uh, it it basically enables the overall efficiency uh, uh, and the friction less journey that you want to give to the customer if if it is a customer who needs a more thorough check we have the entire end to end uh, modules that can be uh, used for example for uh, field investigation we have a separate module uh, for uh, if you want to in detail verify and sample your documents and and screen them uh, there is a rcu risk control unit uh, module that we have created and uh, uh, really uh, we are also enabled our services with a post disbursement uh, document tracking and booking uh, modules that uh, are needed generally in a auto finance case 
uh, uh, can we have the next slide? Uh, so these are some of the unique propositions. We are also looking at uh, uh, extending our capabilities to not only uh, single uh, car buyers, but to fleet owners as well, where you, you have the ability to you know, buy in bulk uh, different kinds of vehicle. Um, and how can we make that journey uh, very uh, seamless? Uh, because there, uh, there are challenges around uh, the different varieties of assets that the customer is buying at once. And usually these, these solutions are difficult uh, and have not been addressed yet uh, in the market. So that is one uh, big area that we're working on. Um, we are also uh, quite uh, uh, aggressively working on uh, enabling a straight through processing. And uh, this is where our uh, data uh, processing efficiency uh, comes into picture where the segmentation of the customer is done. And uh, if, if the customer falls a plum into the policy of the auto financier, uh, there are uh, straight through uh, disbursals that uh, we have enabled within a matter of uh, uh, minutes, which was earlier taking uh, a longer time for a dispersal. So these are some of the capabilities that we've added to our portfolio and, and, uh, and also uh, kind of leveraging the uh, entire uh, solution that is coming up with the India stack uh, that we've been able, so we have we have a ESB layer where we have about 250 uh, API integrations that enable uh, us to fetch uh, this data uh, for uh, uh, for segmentation and uh, straight through processing. Can we have the next slide, please? Uh, and uh, for us, uh, the efficiency is uh, not only getting the uh, growth, but also channel integrations where uh, the ecosystem uh, we we need we want to be a part of the ecosystem because uh, ultimately uh, the data has to be collected. Uh, say, for example, of a asset from uh, dealers. Uh, there are use cases where, um, uh, for example, uh, in uh, Drooms case and Spinney's case, where they are holding the entire inventory. How do we get access to that? Uh, because the valuation cycle then can be reduced. So these are some of the use cases that we are working on. Uh, uh, RC and DL check uh, automatically uh, are done. What what data can they uh, revert with and how can we evaluate that data uh, points for a quick uh, verification. So some of these features is what we are uh, uh, looking at adding. And uh, our, our solution uh, has been used by some uh, marquee uh, financiers and uh, both in the four-wheeler as well as the two-wheeler segment. So handing it back to uh, Amrit uh, for uh, taking this further. Thank you, Rohit. I'd now like to call Nimish Joshi, who heads Asset Finance at HDB Financial Services. An engineering graduate with a management qualification, Nimesh has managed a wide portfolio in retail finance functions like product management, sales, collections, auto loans, commercial vehicles, construction equipment, and tractors. Nimesh has refined expertise in product and program management, channel sales, direct sales, distribution, collections, channel management, and risk management. We are honored to have you, Nimesh. Over to you. Thanks, Amrit. Uh, and hello, everyone. Feels extremely good to be part of this wonderful forum. Um, I'm Nimish, and I will be sharing my views on the used car space. And secondly, how the digitization has helped the used car industry to grow multifolds. So let me start with you know giving such a you know one background about the digitization process because in any of the business that you manage, digitization plays a very important role. And the same is applicable for the asset loans as well. So this, it helps to enhance the business volumes. It also helps to you know, ensure that uh, customer delight through the seamless customer onboarding process, speedy and transparent process for all the parties involved in the loan. And most importantly, we being lender, it is extremely important that you know we are protected in terms of the risk part, which we see in any of the business. Now, we all know that uh, Indian uh, car market is now world's fourth uh, largest market. 
and uh, we have seen that the new car space has shown a significant improvement last year and uh, with the chip problems going on still you know industry is doing pretty well this year so if we look at the data it suggests that every month this year this financial year fy23 is better than what we have seen the last year so we are i think uh, to you know, to be fair on the industry part we are back to normal and possibly growing at a very good space expecting a cagr around 7 to 10% this year now indian um, uh, car industry last year touched around 30 lakhs volumes now when we talk about the used car which is the most uh, you know talking point these days in the industry because this space has seen so much traction in the recent times uh, because of multiple things and the first thing which comes to my mind is the size of the opportunity you know which exists in this segment so when we compare the opportunity size the the opportunity available in the market in comparison to new cars this uh, product has significantly you know higher opportunity size which some people estimate around 2x of the new car market to be fair uh, you know it would be appropriate to expect that the estimated size of the industry is 1.7x of the new car which is like 30 lakhs multiplied by 1.75 this was the market size which we have seen last year now we have seen that this industry has grown significantly in the recent 5 to 10 years especially in the last 5 years and uh, we'll discuss the reasons of for the for this growth but at the same time it is expected that this industry is further uh, will be growing at around 15 to 20% of the cagr my personal expectation is it is likely to grow to you know beyond 20 this year uh, because of multiple factors one is uh, you know the participation the, if you see the la- landscape of this industry they are basically industries divided into four parts one is the organized which is the oem backed uh, dealerships which manages use car space along with digital partners which are like corporate dsis you know we have multiple names i don't want to quote anyone's name here but there are multiple partners here you know in the industry in india which have recent times shown a you know significant growth the second is the semi organized segment when i talk about semi organized it is basically a dsa a channel partner which you see in any of the remote locations these days these are the car brokers which we call it you know in a uh, normal parlance and they are the ones who are involved in the used car transactions where they find the buyer they find the seller and then through the lender they complete the journey and um, one more uh, you know uh, a, a partner here is the unorganized segment which is like you know the lenders available in the rural market especially or in the small towns where they are not organized ones and they lend uh, to the customer for you know and assist him in buying in used car and last but not the least is the c2c transactions where the one customer is selling to the other and there is a transaction which is happening which may or may not require the finance participation now what we have seen is earlier the the or contribution of the organized segment was pretty low as per our estimate the the you know if we go back to history the participation of the organized segment was around 10 to 14% till fy19 in fy21 we have seen this has grown by 5% so currently contributing to around 23% which the last reported in fy21 our estimate is this year this will be touching around 28 to 30% now this is a good sign for the market because of variety of reasons which can be discussed in the you know for the pointers so this gives them good opportunity semi organized which is basically a dsa operating in a market this participation is as high as around 35 to 38 percent now if we total it almost 60 plus percent of the volumes in the current scenario is coming from organized and semi organized now this is extremely important and point to be noted that you know because of this there is a growth in the market which is which we all have seen now when the participation of the organized and semi organized goes as high as beyond 60% it helps to you know get the finance availability now we have seen that finance 
for the used car space is available you know every nook and the corner of the city, you know, country all the banks and almost all the nbfcs are focused on this product and this is helping to increase the finance penetration in the market space because earlier when we have you know we were talking about the unorganized and c2c transactions the finance penetration overall in the market landscape was as low as around 17 to 18% which this time is expected around uh, you know in the current report that we are seeing currently at around 40 plus percent the you know the finance penetration has already reached now this 40 plus plus percent is not the end of the story because there is a good headroom available where you know this finance penetration can cross to as high as around 60 odd percent in some time only now comes to the distribution now when it comes to uh, the banks and NBFCs, they are fairly spread these days across all geographies and have got uh, decent uh, participation in tier one two three four five kind of markets and it is you know increasing further in the uh, as as we progress and now we, we are since hopefully we are out of covid now so basically you know the expansion plan which were on hold for since last two two and a half years are now taking shape now every bank and nbfcs are expanding in the rural geographies now all this all three four pointers in terms of opportunity size landscape of the market finance availability and distribution these are basically the pointers through which we have seen that the, our industry is growing but when it comes to lenders like us why we are focusing so much on this product segment this is primarily because of the fact that the quality of the portfolio is significantly better what we see in the other products uh, now why it is better this can be you know uh, this is like you are funding on a depreciated asset you are funding on a asset uh, which is already registered. You just need to do a name transfer and hypothecation done. So if you are fairly placed in terms of your risk on the asset. In the finance industry, basically we talk about two risks. One is on the asset risk and second on the customer risk. So as far as asset risk is concerned, it this is you know highly protected because unlike funding on a new car where we are doing almost 100% of the, you know, the asset cost, the moment asset is out of the showroom, the cost goes down by minimum 10%. Here you are funding on a depreciated asset and with a lesser LTV. So your asset uh, quality is protected on the day one. So your risk on the asset is protected. Now when it comes to customer risk, there are multiple ways which we will be talking in the next slide in terms of how the customer risk can be protected. So now concluding on the point of portfolio quality and name, the portfolio behavior of used car space is significantly better. Secondly, this is also resulting in, in uh, higher names for the organization. Now, uh, moving to the next uh, slide, which is on the digitization of the used car space. Now, we have all seen that, uh, we all know that, you know, in order to grow volumes multifold, we need a digital process in place. Rakesh also explained how two-wheeler you know, product has evolved with the help of the digitization. Car is one more space where, you know, we have seen the digitization has resulted into higher volumes. Now, when we talk about digitization, what we need to understand is the, this is a personal segment, you know, vehicle. This is unlike commercial vehicles, construction equipments and tractors, which are basically used for the commercial or agri application. This is basically a family vehicle, which you, we are going to buy. Taxi, you know, the uh, the yellow plate vehicle participation is currently too low, so I'm not covering that point as of now. So basically, this is for the personal usage. Now, when it comes to the personal usage, the moment customer lands to any of the dealerships or a used car BSA, his expectation is he should be uh, he should have the comfort and the confirmation that this loan is doable or not. Now, in order to do that. Uh, we, uh, we, including all banks and NBFCs, they all have their platforms through which they onboard the customer. So when it comes to onboarding the customer, we have uh, something like loan origination module, which can either be in the mobile application or in the web, where we capture the demographic details of the customer. Now, by capturing this, we are, you know, uh, we, we are directing this application towards the uh, rule engine. Now, this rule engine is designed 
in terms of uh, like you know the the profile of the customer so if the profile of the customer is self employed or a salaried or you know um, a banking surrogate now the rules will run this is the customer profile now this is all automated the moment you select the profile of the customer as self employed the rules of self employed will start following now with the proposal which is there the 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 soft approval can be given through the mobile application within no time actually it's a real time decision thing which is happening because you know the customer profile you have his basic kycs you also have the bureau output which gives you you know one comfort in terms of whether it's case is doable or not so basically instantly you can give a soft approval in terms of whether you are good to go with this case or you want further any requirement or you are not interested in terms of not fitting to the profile which you are targeting now once we have this uh, you know the real time uh, soft approval in place then the second step is the documentation of you know capturing now the documentation capturing is you know can run parallelly along with the demographic detail capturing so once you capture the documents of the customer the entire validations can be done online when we talk about the pan card uh, banking or the aadhar validation all can be done you know on a real time basis now considering you know the lag in terms of the connectivity and all at least we can be rest assured that within half an hour we can validate most of these details now the important piece which comes into the use car is the valuation of the asset so you have two models to where you can evaluate how much you can be able to fund one is on the customer profile you decide a loan value which can be given at the in terms of your soft approval and second is you parallelly run the valuation and check the idv of the asset so idv is insurance depreciated value and and the physical valuation of the asset now the moment you your documents are validated in parallel goes the link for the valuation to the respective valuator subject to customer confirms that he is you know good with the uh, offer that as a lender you are making now when it comes to valuation it it goes in a digital way to the valuator so we have uh, we means you know or most of the banks and nbfcs they have got valuation type across all the geographies now this valuator will visit the customer's place or and see the vehicle do a physical value valuation uploads the valuation report and it moves back to the lois parallelly you can also initiate the fi and the rc verification for own customers you can waive off all these conditions but for the new uh, to the company customer you need to do fi and rc is again sub subjective you know it, it can be required it cannot be you know it, it may be waived depending upon the scenario but in case if both these things are required parallelly the links can be uh, you know uh, sent to uh, the fi agency and and the rcu agency for doing this checks rcu agencies mostly do these checks digitally only so i think you are uh, you you will you are going to save your time on this fi will have you know some timeline so what we normally see is within 2 to 2 days or less you know one and after 2 days the entire process can be completed now this is this is available across all geographies when we initially talked about the tier 1 market tier 2 market so these are the markets where banks are significantly you know better placed in the tier 3 4 5 where nbfcs play a very important role with the valuation agencies in place with the fi and the rcu verifications in place i think you are covering the entire geography so you are giving the market an opportunity to enter into a organized segment and do a lending which is completely digitized now doing all this basically ends up uh, giving benefits to all which includes so there are four parties involved one is the buyer one is the seller third is the channel who is like you know uh, introducing the buyer and seller to the lender and finally the lender so now you are giving transparency for all the four parties so now they are all clear in terms of how the process is moving which itself is a great satisfaction which was not there earlier you need to check with the banker that whether i've got my loan approved or not you know i have also personally gone through such scenarios when i took my first car but now this is all you know that era era is gone now this this is the era of real time soft approvals now as a lender you are also mitigating all kind of risks that possibly exist during the you know uh, evaluation of the customer 
so risk are getting mitigated mitigated you have almost all fraud controls in place and if we see broadly this is entirely seamless end to end process and most importantly when we talk about that the opportunity size is growing the market landscape is changing this is all because of the fact that the end customer is feeling delighted so basically you know uh, this is one space which we all need to watch out for in the times to come because i personally feel that with a cagr of 20 plus my personal expectation is beyond 20 plus is something which is uh, the most talking point in the times to come and we are hopeful that this industry will give us uh, good volumes in the times to come and lastly it tells the customers to make a fair choice a transparent process and ends up into the customer delight thanks for giving me this opportunity on sharing my views will be happy to take questions amrit over to you thank you so much nimesh that that was really wonderful to to you know walk with you through the entire journey of the used car space how it's become so much more prominent and and with a cgr of over 20% with astrix it it sure looks like a wonderful space to be in so with that we come to the final segment of our webinar which is the question and answers now i see there are a, there's a flurry of questions already directed uh, towards us we will be happy to take them through uh so nimish nimish you're back on apparently you're a man in demand and and why not so uh, when you're uh, giving us a, a, a forecast of over 20% of cgr in the used car market uh, i guess it will raise some eyebrows uh, certainly so the first question that i'm getting from the audience here is on what factors are you evaluating consumers before you know providing the financing and how is it different from uh, the factors that you evaluate while providing a new car loan thanks amrit uh, happy to take this question i think you know in my uh, presentations i've covered one point which is which i'll be repeating here because you know that makes sense here so basically you know in in any of the business lending business uh, broadly there exists two risk one is the customer risk and second is the asset risk now you need to protect both of them because you know being a lender you need to ensure that you maintain a good portfolio so uh, when it comes to the customer risk basically you know you are protecting your customer risk this is the rule based platforms that you have where you know you can evaluate the customer based on the profile bureau output banking behavior currently we you know most of the companies have started the pin code delinquency data to track and you always have the track records in which uh, through which you can you know help the customer help to evaluate the customers along with your rise in the fraud control checks which are also digitized as we discussed during the presentation so uh, in a, in a way that your customer risk is broadly covered although there are you know scope of leakages but i think you know most of the leakages are covered and second point is on the asset risk as we discussed in the slides asset risk basically is how much you need to expose on the asset so that you know your asset risk is protected now the resale grid of this asset because you know you are funding on a uh, asset which is already depreciated secondly you are also protecting yourself in terms of unregistration of the vehicle because this vehicle is already registered so these two points helps on the resale grid uh, you are evaluating the customer and you also have the insurance depreciated value with you what it makes is that you have got a fair understanding about the what should be the price of the asset if in case some default happens and you need to dispose the asset the second point which comes to the asset risk is on the the asset model customer match because you know normally we miss out on this part like you know some self employed customer buying bmw then we should be you know thinking about whether this asset in the customer class matches or not so you can you have you some internal thought process on this so that you can you know evaluate this as well that whether you know this is helping you or not then you have valuation reports which gives you a fair idea in terms of what will be the valuation of the asset along with the valuation reports you also have the photographs of the vehicle so that your internal teams can also be you know go great teams can also refer to the photographs and the valuation reports both now these days the kind of valuation reports that you know the the parties are providing 
is is quite descriptive like you know you can get almost every detail including the tire you know how, how much tire is used so far and what is the life available in the time to come so i think you are fairly well placed in terms of valuation reports and last but not the least uh, which i mentioned earlier but repeating it again that lenders fund on the depreciated asset which is not true when it comes to the new cars so i think your asset risk is you know protected to a very very large extent so i think i tried to cover the point in case you know anything else to be explained on this i can be happy to explain that thank you so much nimesh uh, now rohit apparently uh, so with with the market growing many fold and and uh, with so much digitization entering the uh, the fin uh, financial services space how does lentra as as a uh, you know uh, lending cloud platform differentiate its its uh, offering Uh, so basically at lentra um, uh, one very good thing that we did at the right time was look for becoming an open api platform uh, which meant that we are now very very agnostic to the channel um, that the uh, case or a uh, person is looking at so we have examples where we um, have directly direct integrations with oems so for a particular financier we have cases directly flowing in from the oem websites as well um in some cases we have uh, uh, chatbots so customer uh, looks for a loan in different ways um we have that available uh, then uh, we've also got dealership model uh, which is the standard model uh, usually i think is still 70 80% of the cases come through the dealerships for that we've made um, uh, a kind of uh, a mobile enabled solution so uh, pretty much a lot of channels that we uh, see will also uh, on the exist now uh, rohit we seem to have lost you for a bit Okay. We'll see if we can circle back to you again. Vehicle. Rohit, in the interest right. of so, time, I have uh, I have space just to take door, one more door, question door on uh, to the door delivery. So these channels will keep on um, uh, changing, and we've uh, got to adapt to them. Uh, our open API platform helps in that case. So on the other, uh, on the eval entire. a range of api is available which uh, not only to video uh, but the kyc the it, we have kyc apis we have it kind of an offer you can segment the customer in various ways uh, let's journey uh, rohit we've lost you again we'll we'll come back to you uh, if time permits uh, now there's course, there's an interesting question that earlier used to happen uh, to a very there's an interesting question coming up and it's it's kind of related to what uh, uh, mr rakesh kumar alluded to uh, so what how do you see ev entering uh, and contributing to the industry and and uh, how is it going to address the uh, current finance penetration and and basically how is it going to address the uh, penetration in the market going forward mr rakesh over to you a yeah, very 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 interesting question uh, whatever we have talked about the two wheeler industry in the beginning that the industry has not gone back to its normal number which was there in 1920 but if we add the ev numbers which are sold there it is almost to that level that has already gone and the growth of two wheeler ev industry this financial year is almost they have doubled their number in the first six months itself what they did in the entire year and the last month it was phenomenal number first time ever they had done 75000 units into this and this is what the high speed vehicles which are registered the official data on wahan is only shared for the registered vehicles which is which in their terms they call it high speed vehicles but the low speed vehicle which is almost almost three times the number what it sold so if i say that 75000 uh, is the uh, high speed vehicle number then approximate 
two lakh unit is the low speed vehicle which is also sold in the country so put together the industry is about it, the average industry is between 2.2 lakhs to 2.5 lakhs for this financial year uh, last month it was very good because of the festivity so that is uh, growing with a fairly good pace there are a lot of very very important players into this market the vehicle quality and the features which is there in the product is very very good additionally yes as for the retail finance is concerned retail finance penetration as of now in this particular segment is very very low it is not even close it is close to about 25% 30% availability uh, but uh, every player now have uh, started uh, financing including hdb also we were not financing ev last year but this year we have started uh, financing we also want to grow it to a level of almost 10% of our total two wheeler business into this and things as as we go forward things will get more organized players will be available there the product will be available there the quality of product will also be improved whatever the bad name was there due to, due to some fire incident that has also almost almost cooled down now nothing no such incident has happened in last some 40 or 45 to 60 days so that the fear among the customer has also come down and the the average uh, one charge but the kilometer for one charge has also is also going up i recently met a oem manufacturer who is claiming 150 km in one full charge which is as per two wheeler standard it is very very good so i am very very optimistic about this and almost all the players uh, in the in this particular field of retail finance has now started doing their financing uh, for as far as the uh, non registered vehicle is concerned these vehicle has to be funded more like a consumer durable product a tv free something like that the cost will also be almost on the same range of 60 to 75000 rupees but eventually it has to be sold like that only in the market and it is all shaping up as the as the time moves out ahead and we have enough data to analyze at our end uh, things will improve i am very optimistic about this thank you thank you so much mr rakesh now rohit coming back to you we will be lost you there for a bit when you were explaining about the uh, api centric uh, platform that uh, we built at lentra would you like to continue from there yeah so uh, so basically i just wanted to um, say that um, uh, when uh, the the platform that we've created uh, is uh, an open api platform and it, uh, it that has uh, helped us a lot in uh, increasing mark uh, growth for our customers so we have active integrations with oems with dealerships with chatbots because these the uh, the uh, leads and the customer uh, searching for a loan happens in different ways and different customers do different things the dealership model is still uh, quite prevalent so we have um, made uh, an application which in the dealership can uh, enable quick uh, assessment of the customer there at the dealership uh, itself just like a consumer durable kind of assessment that gets done uh, downstream also we have all the entire set of apis uh, right from assessment for uh, the ovds the video kycs the the aadhar e kyc to uh, e sign e nach e mandate all all of them removing friction from a four wheeler two wheeler kind of a, a journey which which are uh, kind of uh, uh, usually dealership led models right now but however we are also envisaging that um, uh, things like ev are getting sold right now in different ways for example the ola example that i wanted to give where ola is delivering vehicles at the doorstep so for all you know later down the line it will may be a swiggy kind of experience that we need to give for even car deliveries so we are uh, quite enthused with what what we have built and i think it uh, sits quite well in uh, building an ecosystem for our uh, financiers thank you, so thank you so much rohit and uh, i'm afraid we have run overboard by over 12 minutes and and which is not something that we uh generally uh, like to do in our webinars but yes this has been that kind of a session extremely interesting amazing speakers i thank all the speakers for their time all our attendees who gave us uh, their valuable time thank you so much on behalf of lentra and hdb financial services 
Uh, and with that, we'd like to call this session to a close. Uh, have a nice rest of the day. Thanks, Amrit. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Amrit. Thanks, Rohit. Thank you, Amrit. Thank you. Thanks, Rakesh. Thank you.